gentlemen, 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 we do have Giuseppe D checking in from the great north. That is Canada. That's coming in. Joey DeMar, can we have Joseph DeMar check into the house? And then, of course, by all means, we have Mikey Bear Down Cuz, because what would a brilliantly dumb show podcast be without Mikey Bear Down Cuz? Gentlemen, how are we today? Go ahead, Joe. I know you got things you want to say. Go ahead. I think we have a lot. I think we have a lot of things to get on the table. I have, First a, lot, I have a lot. I have a lot I have to say. I have a First lot of, that I got. Let me just say something right off the bat. It's great to see your two faces again. I'm sorry about last week. I was fighting uh, the worst cold possibly of my life, and uh, it is what it is. But we're back. We're stronger than ever, and and now we're ready to we're ready to roll. That's before, it. Before before we get into anything, because I know there's a lot of hostility in the room right now. First off, Mikey, we are so glad that you are better because I'll be the first to tell you, I don't think this podcast is the same without you. And I will like to give credit here to Giuseppe D because I gave cold cuts the option to really give you a hard time for a no call, no show. Now, it's one thing for the podcast to say, hey, you know what? I can't make it today. I'm not going to be here. And I started to panic when I didn't hear from Mikey V. I started to panic last week. I, I I legitimately got concerned. Out of the gate, the panic was more so for the podcast. Like, fuck, what are we going to do about the podcast? As me and Cole Cuts and Jet were recording the podcast, then mentally I started to say, holy shit, like, what the fuck is going on with Mikey V? This is so unlike him to not hear from him. Um, and then I gave the option to Cold Cuts. I said, Cold Cuts, would you like to in some way, put some consequence on Mikey V for a no call, no show as reliable as the guy is. Are you upset with the no call, no show cold cuts completely called it off. And he said, absolutely not. I will not give him a hard time for the no call, no show. And I put an end to that immediately as cold cuts says it. I think cold cuts really made the right play there. And with that being said, he is in the room here tonight. Let's bring in Joey Coldcuts. I mean, the Last fact that moved, Joe, thank you. I mean, Thanks, the fact Joe. that you would even consider calling this man out when he has done the podcast time and time again on family vacation in the middle of freezing cold temperatures, with family crying, children. Uh, he go. he is dedicated. I mean, the, the but, fact but, that you but, would but consider I gotta one stop time. You. I got to Coldcuts. Usually, I'll let you go. I got to stop you right there because that's exactly what I said to you. I before any of that. I said he is the most one, dedicated. But, one, but, one but, time in but, your, on death but row, Cutsy, like, what are we talking no, about? No, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. Cutsy, that's exactly what I said. I said, this is why it's so concerning because he's the most reliable guy that I know. And if you check the tape, you'll see that I said that. I yeah, said, but you're ready to throw him under the bus. No, I was not. I went over to you. As an instrumental part of the podcast and said, should there be any consequences? Mikey could miss a month as far as I'm concerned, and I'd welcome them back with open arms. That's all I was One in a million. One in a million. As soon as you said there should be no consequences for the no call, no show, I didn't fight you on that. And by the way, way, I'm commending you. I'm commending you for the for the for the play. Well, I appreciate that, Bob. But you know what? We a band of brothers. You stick together no matter what, and 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 it yeah. shouldn't have even been a question. Wow. The show goes on. Next man up. And by the way, I thought we ran a very good podcast. If I'm being honest, I thought Jet was great. And you know, you you, you know, sometimes your star player, one of your star players, can't play. You got to have you got to have backup resources. You got to be able to go out there and play the game. The big well, three didn't play every night together. You know, but, sometimes. But, but this was this was a this was a very very dire situation for me. It is not like me. You're right. That is not like me. I'm always one to reach out to say what's going on. I won't be able to do this. I won't be able to do that. I literally, my body completely shut down on me. It shut down on me in a way in which it's never failed me before. It's never failed me before like this. So now I went from Sunday night all the way until about Saturday of this this past Saturday. So last Sunday. The Sunday after St. Patrick's Day, all the way to Saturday that just passed without feeling normal. And then finally Sunday, yesterday, I started feeling normal, like 100%, like I'm good to go. Like today I went to the gym. I feel fantastic. I'm back. I'm ready to fire. I'm amped up. Bob, you pulled a couple things before this podcast started that I know Cuts is not going to let you off the hook for. So no matter what kind of of preamble you're going to give 
you know, applauding Joey Colcutt's kindness, which certainly I applaud because I, I didn't I didn't realize I was going to be left out in the streets uh, being labeled a no call, no shower. That's I don't want to be labeled like that's that. That's not fair. I don't want to be labeled. That's Bob. not fair. That's okay. not. I never called the no call, no show. Okay. I gave cold cuts. The yeah, option. but you know what you you know what he did bear down. He gave he planted me, the seed. Did yeah, he, plant he gave the me seed? the option. So if I said yes, I'm the bad guy. But if I say no, he goes. Well, I was just given the option. Bob sure. always likes to put himself in a position where he doesn't have to take the rep. For the fall, he always likes to be the guy who's giving the you know the the the, the criminal the gun, but doesn't pull the trigger. <laughs> you know, it's it's very convenient, Bob. And by the way, we're twenty minutes running late for this podcast, and and I was pissed. I'm pissed, Bear. You know that. I'm I in can a, tell in he's a, now, my, Bob. He's he's agitated. I put my I mom's got a, dinner I got a on hold. I got a couple side texts. My mom's dinner's agitated. on hold. My First mom's making a whole dinner for me. I told That's her you got to hold because we got a podcast. Wow. And 20 minutes late, and Bob's trying to make it sound like it's my fault so then he knows i'm pissed i come in hot and the first thing he does he tries to commend me by giving me a compliment then i think it smooths things over does very it. strategic move by bob there he's, he, he thought he, that was gonna quell well the storm first things first okay we were an eight o'clock eastern standard time start now any podcast we have ever had 20 15 minutes prior we have a ton of dialogue whether it's the top five What are we going to talk about? What's on the agenda? Is it sports? Is it entertainment? I don't know. But the problem is we heard nothing from Cutsy. So at 7.59 Eastern Standard Time, where we had still had not heard anything from Cutsy, I made the decision as a host to say, you know what? Let's back it up to 8.10. Why not send the link? What's that? Why not send the link? Before because I hadn't start heard time? anything from you, Joseph. But I, I didn't never even told know. you that I needed to run late. I never told you that I need you to back it up. If I'm running late, do I not r- r- chime in, Bear Down, and say, guys, I need you to push it back? That's or why Bear I was says, very push concerned. It by 20 minutes? So that's, there was concern. There was a I think Bob wasn't I mean, ready. Personally, but, I don't think you were ready. Of I think course I'm ready. I'm in Jupiter, Florida. What else do I got? To have do I, you got the happy I, hour with the jackals. You, you're, you're probably <laughs> coming in late, you know, and, and, and then you like to throw somebody under the bus. You like to have a scapegoat. No, I, I got news for you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of you keeping coming at the jackals because the Jupiter <laughs> Jackals senior softball team did probably the best content we've done in quite some time. It did right now when I just checked over $4,000 in merchandise in less than a day. So all I would say is take and it by easy the way, on the Jupiter Jackals. Down, look at this. If you look at this phone, okay, by the way, just to dispel his his thing at 459, if I don't know if you can see that, I say I'm here. So for yes. him to say that he didn't hear one from minute, me by one four, minute, well, by he said 459, he, but well, bear to, down, to, please to bear be, down, to be, can you please to be take fit. the floor? To be fair, Bob said that you didn't respond until 7.59. However, I think maybe Bob was a little scarred from last week from my from my not communicating well enough. And maybe he was a little, he was like, oh my God, PTSD. could this happen? Could this happen twice in a row to me? Yes, a little PTSD, a little a little scarring perhaps. And, and he, you know, but I think- can it was I, I will say going. too, I will say too, I, I, I really meant it when I gave you the credit cutsy because for you to make that call, to not give the bear down the no call, no show was absolutely the right call. It was absolutely the right call. He's here week after week. And I commended that call. And I'm not just sitting here saying that I really do believe you made the right call. I put the ball in your hands. You made the right call. Can we start the podcast? Yeah, I, I wanted to start it 20 minutes ago, but yeah, I'm, I'm over it. Let's let's move on. And, and, and I will say it feels like we're a whole team again. It's it's nice. It does. I, I, it's it does. It might not seem like and, it to and the viewer. It would be right the now. same if you weren't there. It, it, you yeah. know, it definitely would feel like that if I wasn't here. So, uh, you know, we're we're a three man army, and and you know, the show goes on, and 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 you know, that's it. You push, press forward. You know, young warriors, we press forward. Tripod, trident, holy yeah. triumvirate, whatever you want to call and, it. And I, I do agree with you, Cold Cuts, that I do think it's <laughs> a good episode. I mean, it did really good numbers, but there's something with Mikey V not here. The same thing that I think if I wasn't here, if you wasn't here, there was just something missing. And it's good to be back. And with that Definitely if said, Joe wasn't here. 
Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. If cuts, he wasn't here now, what I would like to see out of cold cuts and he's in Canada right now. And bear down was very worried about the Canada Wi-Fi. I I'm worried about the Canada Wi-Fi it's held up, but I would like to see a little life to those walls. Am I, I got to say down? this? I got to say this, the Wi-Fi holding up great, but there are dips in and out where cold cuts goes complete shadow. And he looks like one of those guys on like a he, dateline interview where they're he, dubbing out his voice into like, I I think yeah. that's what happened when I ran you know the what? right there. That's it. Yeah, that was I would, the, that was the I would like to see a little. Something. I'd like to see a little life out of those. Okay, walls, we got a little additional Chevy. light. All right, right now, all right. Okay? Maybe a couple posts. Shadowing. I mean, but you this know is, what? This is, a, this is a work office room. Yeah, you know, I I think all year. things. I think all things considered, Joe. I mean, the fact that you're there, you're with your family. I mean, that is it's it's a certain level of dedication. But I tell you what, everybody brings dedication here. Nobody right now other than me is at home base. Bob is not at home base. He's at his parents. Joe is not at home base. He's at his parents. I, I was not at home base two weeks ago. I was in Colorado. But weekend, the one show time I was on. in Atlantic City. We just do it wherever it is. We'll get it done for you because that's what we do. That's what we do. Okay. Now, gentlemen, with that being said, I think we got it all out, and it's great to see you guys. Okay. Um, I want to get into the buy or sell. I want to get into the buy or sell segment two weeks since we've seen Mikey V um, cold cuts went to Canada. I went to Florida, just a lot of moving parts. Um, And with that being said, I'd love to get into our buy and sell segment. What do we see during the week or two weeks that we like? What do we see that we don't like? And if you guys don't mind, I would love to go ahead and, and get us started here. I have no issue with that. I would like to sell Gonzaga university basketball because this is a team that gets pass after pass after pass because they are not a big name however they in basketball been, they are a big name bob they're they, a big name they are but i in think basketball but that's they, all they are yeah they are but i think they get a big break i think people give them the benefit of the doubt because they're not a unc they're not a duke and it just seems when they get knocked out of a tournament they don't take it as hard of a time as like a duke would um and the reason being is that they're gonzaga however they have been the number one seed for as long as i can remember and i've been putting them in my brackets to go all the way for as long as I can remember. And I do wonder as good of a job as this Mark few is doing at what point do you start to put point the finger and be upset with Gonzaga for not being able to get the job done. The talents there, the people are there. It's one thing to be a good recruiter. It's another thing to be a good coach at some point. Gonzaga has got to get it done. And at some point, I think we got to start giving Gonzaga a tough time. They lost a game that they had no business losing, and they flat out fell short. And I think the entire world bet Gonzaga that night. Um, Gonzaga basketball has got to be better. Sell your stock in Gonzaga basketball. I'm completely done with them. I'm finished with them. Over to Joey Cold Cuts we go. I don't have any issues with that. I'm also going to sell something. I'm going to sell it real hard. And I don't care if anybody cares or disagrees with me because bottom line is that this, this is something that I just could care less about. And, you know, it won't affect my everyday living whatsoever. I'm selling the Oscars. I don't give a shit about the Oscars to be quite frank. The most attention I've spent on this is yesterday because of the, the mayhem that ensued with Will Smith smacking the shit out of Chris Rock on TV. Um, that, that to me is the only reason I even cared about the Oscars. I didn't care. And by the way, Baron, you can attest to this. I watch movies. Half the, the movies now that are nominated, I don't, I don't even know, know what the know hell either. is yeah, in, I don't, you know, I don't. these movies. Oh, you got to watch this. It's a cinematographic, like uh, a <laughs> wonder, wonderful masterpiece. Meanwhile, they don't even advertise for it on TV. They Bizarre. don't, they don't, it's, it's like the Sundance Bizarre. festival. If they approve for it, all of a sudden it's a, it's a nominee category winner, you know? And, and to be honest, it's just, I don't give a shit. I don't care about the pageantry of it. I don't care about the, the outfits, the red carpet. To be honest, 
I, I don't remember the last time I sat down on a Sunday and said, I'm going to spend three and a half hours watching the Oscars. And the only reason, by the way, that any anybody's even talking about the oscars is because of what happened and it's a ton of bad publicity and press for the academy so i think half the time the best actors don't even win leonardo dicaprio had to go fucking through the ringer back and forth before he won an oscar you know will smith won an oscar for this movie king richard i haven't even watched it how many good movies did he make in the past between pursuit of happiness and seven pounds and all these good independence movies independence well, that's not a that's he's not going to win best actor for that. But my point great being, movie though, great is movie. that 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 to me, I don't feel like the best actors, the best movies are winning. Last year, okay, I'll give it. To, you know, uh, the Joker won Joaquin Phoenix. I, I'll agree with that. But a lot of these movies, I don't even know what the hell I'm watching. No, and you're no. watching hours and hours. By the way, Bear Down. The only things anybody cares about is best actor, best female actress, and best movie. All these are best screenplay, best musical play right i don't give a shit so and for I me think, i think they cut those i think they cut a lot of those awards out because a lot of people had the same complaint about it and my my cell was an oscar cell also it wasn't the oscars in particular it was the, it was the slap itself i was selling it uh will smith he he issued a long-winded apology uh he just put it out on his social media and all this stuff oh, about how God. he's a work in progress if you say you're a work in progress if you just if you preface and end everything with i'm not perfect i'm a work in progress pretty much all is forgiven that you could do you could do anything and if you say i'm in a work in progress that tugs at the at the heartstrings of a lot of these you know very well, ultra sensitive would you say most people are a work in progress we're always that's progressing. exactly why it's total a total sell it's a total cop out Will Smith, he lost his head. He pimp slapped Chris Rock across the face. For what reason? I have no idea. Because number one, you see him laugh at the joke about Jada Pinkett beforehand. Then he gets up and slaps Chris Rock across the face. Why? I don't know. Jada Pinkett, his old lady, has been sleeping with every guy underneath the sun. And this is the tipping point for you? That you that you got to smack Chris Rock across the face in front of all your peers? Now everybody's ripping him. Everybody's saying this about him. People are wondering, is this fake? Is this not fake? I guess, I guess, listen, it's, I guess it's not fake. I'm going to just accept the fact that I, it's not fake. He released an apology, this, that, and the other thing. You saw the uncensored versions of it from Japan and Australia where they didn't <laughs> cut out any of the language when he's telling him to keep his, your wife's uh, name out of your fucking mouth, blah, blah, blah. But the whole thing is just so, for a man, as a man, a married man, you're still with a woman who's cheated on you multiple times, has gone public with the fact that she's cheated on you. Then you're going to get up and slap Chris Rock across the face when he's half your size. Let's say The and Rock made that joke. Let's say The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, made that joke about Jada Pinkett. Is Will Smith going to parade himself up on stage and slap The Rock across the face? You know what? I don't too, think so. There's a lot of things that, that could have I... turned out too bad. Imagine it's a guy like Bradley Cooper who does it. Well, then all of yeah. a sudden you got a race thing on you your know head. What? There's a lot of things that could have happened. You know what I would like to add to? Um, and I've told stories about how good Will Smith was to me in the hotel business and how much he helped me with. I mean, a lot of those people remember the story that I told with Will Smith and like, I'll always give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. A, that was awful. And, and to be quite frank, if anybody else did that, he should have been arrested. It, no, it was, no, 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 not arrested, but he no, should have no, been kicked no, out of the, no, he should have no, been kicked I mean, out of the no, building. No, out assault, no. Bear oh, down. no, 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 no. He Listen, been kicked I, out I, of, I'm going to, I'm going to buy Chris Rock's reaction. If I could buy something this week, I'm going to buy Chris Rock's reaction. That, that's where I was going to go. Yeah. He could have, with the adrenaline he had flowing well, through his body. First things first, he had an iron chin. The way oh, that he, he wore even... that slap. And I think that's why people was... think it's fake is because he didn't even move. Yeah. yeah. And, and cuts you back me up in the group chat. Definitely not fake. No. Um, but Chris Rock, it's like he didn't even he wasn't even so quick to get his response out. He kind of like gathered himself and, and yep. figured out the best approach for it. And I thought, I mean, he was I would almost buy your stock in in Chris Rock. That's well, his next, his next his live reaction. is going to be unbelievable. His next, well, they already said that his two next shows, his two, his two next shows have sold out more tickets than he sold in the last two months. His two next comedy live shows, they already said that that his next two shows have already gone ultra viral, have sold more tickets than he sold in the last quarter. Okay, so this is going to do wonders for Chris Rock. I am buying his reaction. 
He didn't hit him back. Number one. Okay. He's not going to go be a little bitch and sue him. I hope not. I hope no, he doesn't he said he's sue not. him. A good move. To he said he's not. He's not. Don't sue him. Don't press any charges. You took it like a man. You made Will Smith look that much more awful. You made him look like basically a punk. Chris uh, Will Smith looks like Will Smith looks like a punk right now. A simp, and then his, a his simp and a punk. And, and then to have what? to back it up with him saying that he's an advocate for love after he just bitch slapped the hell that's out of him. That's where bad. I'm selling it, Bob. I bet you Will Smith is a great guy. I'm not disputing that. I bet he's an awesome guy. But all Will Smith needed to say for me, for me personally, after this, he should have just said, guys, listen, I just fucked up. I lost my head. I slapped this guy. That's it, Chris. I apologize. I don't know what got into me. You know, that's it. I don't need to hear about you're a work in progress. Shut the fuck up. You're a work. Yeah. Everybody, Bob, you hit the And then he's the dancing head. afterwards. Cuts, cuts, you said it. Everybody's a work in progress, bro. I don't need to hear. Just say you fucked up. Nobody wants to just say I, I fucked up I, and, and I, that's it. I think with him, too, he tries to be like this motivational. No, um, spare and, me with and the motivational. Pick the, the perfect words to say. Um, it was eloquent. It was eloquent, but it's it's word salad. It's word salad. It I'm was one of progress. the more. By the way, I cold cut sent this to another group chat that we have, and he sent the clip. It was so daunting to me. It was so wild and bizarre to me right. that my parents who go to sleep at nine o'clock latest, I went in their room to wake them up to show them this clip because I knew they would just be riveted by it. Right. And even the morning I said to them, I said, Mom, did, did, did I, should I have not come in and wake you guys up for that? And they said, no, like, we're happy that you did. Cause they just, I couldn't believe this clip and I had to share it with somebody. Um, I mean, imagine another, the gall to run, to walk up the stage. Oh, oh my God. I think, I mean, it wasn't like it was two steps. It was a long winded walk. Now, another, I, I think a lot of people think it's fake because of that, because it was so like outrageously ridiculous. Another, he like walked the plank. He walked another, the plank. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was no tournament. I mean, I mean, at some point he had to be all in once he was halfway up. Yeah. Oh no, you're there. Another, you're there. What else are you going to do? <laughs> uh, another, another clip that I couldn't believe that I found to be hysterical so much so to where I screen recorded it. Gentlemen, I'm going to have jet uh, post the clip. And then if you folks can um, Mikey V and, and Cutsy, if you could go to the gamblers digest group chat right now, cold cuts did a promotion. Okay. Cold cuts has been in Canada and he went to a wedding and he's a big part of the wedding and cold cuts doesn't sleep. I've never seen a man who doesn't need to sleep. And he tried to do a promo for Proud 90, which is a phenomenal company and, and a company that's really perfect for Cutsy. And Cutsy tried to say that because of the polo that he was wearing, that he wasn't tired, although it had been just a barn burner of a weekend. But <laughs> if, if you watch, if you, I, I was I in bed and I just couldn't stop laughing at the clip. I tell you what, folks, it's been a long day. I'm exhausted, but you would never know. Rocking a fit like this, Joey Crustaceans, how about it? Feeling good, looking better. Proud 90's got you covered. Because Cold cuts his whole thing to the spiel of the clip is that because he had this polo on for Proud ninety, he wasn't exhausted sold a bunch anymore. Of polos. And I'm sure Good you did, you, and they're great polos. However, if you look into the eyes of Cold Cuts, <laughs> he is absolutely <laughs> exhausted. He he is totally totally just no, hair great. looks good. Hair looks great. He always does. But bear down. If you could walk, it looks like he may fall asleep during the video. <laughs> it looks like he may actually fall asleep. It looks like the last thing in the world he wants to do is show the world his lobster polo. But he is so exhausted. It's like he said, "You know what? I, mean, I got to go to bed, it. but I got to do this." Uh. <laughs> Joe, Joe, but I tell you what, Joe, it's a good looking polo. 
No, I got to defend you a little bit, though, Joe. It's not like it's not like a guy like me and you could just throw up a T-shirt of our dad's softball team and sell four thousand oh! dollars worth of shirts oh! in two seconds, yeah. right? Yeah, I got to grind it out. I got to grind it out over here. Guys yeah. like me and Joe got to grind, Bob. We don't have not the jackals everybody's at our built disposal. with the silver jackals. We don't have the jackals. Not everybody's got the silver jackal spoon in their mouth, you know, Bear Down? <laughs> the silver jackal spoon. Oh, but Mikey V, Mikey V, you know. Oh, the, you, oh, the ad is You know outrageous. cold cuts. You know cold cuts by now to where. But I by have the way, it's the four and a half hours, not even that night. I have never in my life. By the way, prior the night before, slept an hour and a half. I'll be the first to tell you. If I don't get seven hours, I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. Yeah, Bob needs his cold sleep. cuts. Notice, is success doesn't sleep. He used to when I first met <laughs> cold cuts. Okay, and I was working at the front desk. I was doing overnight shifts, and he was working in the boulevard in the restaurant. It was the only restaurant in Beverly Hills that was open, and that's because cold cuts wouldn't care to close it down. So it, it in Beverly Hills, people knew. That the Beverly Wilshire at the Four Seasons, if you wanted to go get a drink at 1.30, it was the only spot in Beverly Hills you could go. And that's because Cold Cuts was running the restaurant. That's awesome. Cold yeah. Cuts would stay an extra two hours minimum. Yeah, to wait for you. You've told me this. Yeah. To, yeah. to play ping pong with yeah. me during <laughs> my break. I, I To play ping pong for 30 minutes. And then he would go and then he would, he would True go True friend. Off. No bear down. Very good friend. Now, Bob, how about this cutsy moment from the wedding weekend, which was such a cutsy moment. This was a cutsy moment. Joe, now listen, I got to put you on the spot. Get now, this. when I was hung over dreadfully last uh, Sunday morning uh, after yeah. right now, it turns out it wasn't a hangover. It was a legitimate illness. Correct? The flu. OK, it was a <laughs> legitimate illness. We can't confirm what illness it was, but it was an illness, a severe <laughs> it was illness. influenza, the Spanish influenza. It was 19- it was a bad it was a bad illness. Let's just leave it. at It was a bad illness. It was not covid confirmed, not covid. Um, but anyway. Cut's response was, you know, Mikey V, Mikey V, I feel so bad for you, Mikey V. But, but by the way, that was genuine. But, it was not said in no, a No, I know. Th- can I finish, Joe? Yeah, sorry. I'm Come on, sorry. Giuseppe. I'm sorry. Mikey V, Mikey V, I am so, I feel so bad for you, bud. I feel so bad for you, pal. You know, I wouldn't know what it's like because I never get hangovers. <laughs> but, you know. I don't. I just feel so bad for you. Now, fast forward to the day after the wedding. I, I see a video. The first video I see is cuts a story in the morning. Oh, I tell you what, folks. This morning is a rough one for Cutsy. Should not have made that 6 a.m. tea time. I don't know what I was thinking, but I need some Pedialyte desperately. This is a bad one for your boy, Cutsy. Now, I proceeded to text Joe, obviously. I was like, Joe, what's the problem? You don't get hangovers. Well, there's no, there shouldn't be a, I wasn't well, Mikey, Mikey V, this isn't a hangover. I'm just tired, pal. I'm just tired. I go, you know what? This guy, Joe will, but you know what? If he's got a take, I give it to him. He's just going to defend it no matter how outrageously but, and obvious, obviously Mikey, wrong it is. I heard Peter but, Light helps energize you. Correct. But here's what you got to realize, Cold Cuts. Bear down at the time before he realized that he had the flu. He Sickness. thought that he I was, was sick. I was very sick. He was hung over. No, sick. he was sick. No, he was very over. sick. A, before he realized that he was very sick, cold. he thought that it was a wicked hangover to get a voice message from you. And I have the voice message. So, Jet, we could go ahead and play that as well. We love you, Mikey V. I hope you feel better, buddy. Um, listen, we're getting older, man. These big nights out, they affect us more than usual um i for one do not get hangovers so luckily i'm I, you know i don't have to deal with that but uh, bear through it dude we'll we'll hit the podcast tomorrow it'll be a doozy um and just get better dude we love you There's to hear message? you say mikey v i am oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. sorry for you however <laughs> I can't imagine I what you play the voice message because I don't get hangovers. It's I don't gotta think... enrage Mikey B from his. By the way, I said it, it did, I but said, the thing was, I it said Mikey even... V, we love you. I he hope did. you feel That's better. Correct, you yeah. and did. it's all he heartfelt. Did. I just yeah. had to say, you know, I I try I try to sympathize with you, but I don't get hangovers, so I don't know how <laughs> how you must be feeling. <laughs> but you know what? The, you know what? The I wasn't mad though, Bob. I have to be honest. I just literally was just my. My reaction was 
is is this fucking kid kidding me? Is he is he this guy but is not real. He's not a real person. Here's He's what not I would real. say. Here's what I would say. Six months ago, you would have been really pissed off. Yes. Now yes. If this was like the know... first time I ever interacted with him, I would have said, what are you, a fucking wise guy? You don't exactly. get hangovers. It... Now I'm just like, this is just uh, this just adds to the mystique because and it's that's... just unbelievable. And it's that's what he does. But he doesn't really, you know, that's a beauty he cuts. He is. He doesn't even mean it to be malicious. And that's why all. I don't get mad. He doesn't. Mean that's why I don't get mad. The same thing is like if you're playing cutsy in a match in golf and you're standing over your ball about to putt and you ask the jet this, he'll tell you this. And again, it takes a while to really realize that that like cutsy, he doesn't mean it, but like he'll be behind you, be like, this is a big putt, big dog. Like, you gotta make this putt. And it I just, like it, when Bob gets excited on the course and I can film it. It's it's a good, it's a good but is overall. that more like is that that's more like gamesmanship, is it not? Stella, oh, no barking. Oh. Stella, stop barking. This dog's barking like a fucking madman. Sorry, sorry, boys. Sorry, dogs. Oh, okay. the fuck I don't know. Do you normally deal with dogs? And can't even hear the dog. It's all right. I could hear. I didn't want it to come through in the back end. Oh, that's cute. Gentlemen, we interrupt the Brilliant Dumb Show to let you know that the Brilliant Dumb Show is brought to you by our good friends over at Athletic Greens. I started taking Athletic Greens simply because I wanted to be healthier. It's no game. They get the job done every single time, whether it's the vitamins, whatever supplement you're taking from Athletic Greens. It's an absolute no-brainer for gut health and also what I've noticed mental health. Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin and it's important to choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. Your subscription comes with a year supply of vitamin D, which is so important to add in these winter months when we don't get as much sunlight, even during the months that you do get the sunlight, you gotta have the nutrients and the vitamins that Athletic Greens has. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is gonna give you a free one-year supply of immune support and vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash dumb. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash dumb to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. In the meantime, we are moving on. <laughs> By the way, I got something I got to share you, with you guys. And Bob, you might have seen this, but I don't think Bear Down has. So <laughs> I got, to, I, you know, it's whoa, nice. Whoa, 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 Mikey, Mikey. That, that is, oh. I, I don't know. Someone call an MD over I, here. I got to tell you, that is one <laughs> wicked. No, guys, the guy you who saw was it, on the Stairmaster today. You saw the workout is... I put in today, boys. <laughs> you would be like, He's, he, there's nothing wrong with this fucking guy. He's good to go. Uh, no, you sent, a mess, you sent us a message with a Bro. video, of a picture. It looked like you were getting out of prison. You look like I... you were ready to kill the freaking weights. I'm ready, you bro. see I his was... face, Bob? He looked like he was ready people, to kill the dumbbells. Bob, like, we talk be... about this all the time. If you go like, like four or five days without going to the gym, it's like you might as well make it like four months. That's how yeah, it feels like. It, at, it really bothers me. But at the same me. time, Mikey V, the difference between me and you is, yeah, is if, if I take two weeks off from the gym, you can yeah. see that I took two weeks off. You, it's you look looks like you have done 65 days in a row. And you know what, Bear Down? Come to think of it, maybe that's why you get judged size wise because, yeah. yes, you're so incredibly tall, yeah. but it's the fact that you're just massive and the He's muscle a big mass on presence top to where maybe in order to avoid that. And in yeah. order to to avoid people making comments Pers to you, persecuting me, maybe you might, <laughs> maybe you just go full cardio and you no, don't bother I with the muscle mass. Well, no, see, I, I think I He's think people massive. make little fun jokes because they're scared, you know, and they you know light up too. a little bit. I'm not gonna and fuck. You with don't think this guy's not gonna kill you on the way out? Yeah, no, but you guys, know, Mikey, you guys, are, you guys are you guys are under my protection for the rest of your lives. Though. That's correct. Yes, but Mikey, we know you, so like I know you have a heart like of 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 a five year old child. You have a heart of gold, like. Like a real tiny heart? I don't know. No, it's saying it's a genuine, full a heart. A genuine it's, heart, it's yeah. Un, unfazed. You should it's, have said like a heart of an elephant. Something like no, that. No, but you know, I said like a child. A child is innocent. A child, a pure heart. 
That's what I'm saying. A child okay. is innocent. They're, okay. they're, you know, they're without. Bob's going to try and pretzel this now, <laughs> which is ridiculous because yeah, that's a very yeah. good compliment. It's saying that you're unfazed. You have a pure, innocent <laughs> heart. Yeah, and yeah. I know that. But if you were just to look at you at face value, you scare the fucking shit out of me. You're, think that's you're a big man. Bear down. There's a picture, Bob. You show the picture that Bear Down sent us on the on, the, on <laughs> no, you know from the gym. No, he looks like he's ready to murder. Bear I didn't, down, think, when I we didn't were, think it looked like I was coming out of prison. That's we a horrible. Were, Bob, we were, let's see the picture, Bob. It's, we it's, were, it's, I mean, look at this picture. He's yeah, it's he's it's a mammoth. Really, and that's it's a good gym. thing, Bear Down. You're a strong guy. That's, I, I, I would kill to have biceps like that. I we really were, would. We I'd walk kill, around you want in to a all day. I would trade my biceps for cuts his hair tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, Bob. There was a time at the Patreon <laughs> meetup where I did look across the room at Bear Down, and it was during the time where we gave him so much shit for thinking that he could knock out Jake Paul. And there was a time where I was sipping on my Negroni and I looked across the room and I saw Bear Down. And that, I like, I just took a moment out of the night. I looked at him. I'm like, you know what? He might actually be able to. Well, with some formal money. training, for sure. I think <laughs> yeah, you would I have like, that's yeah. a whole stipulation to the fight, Joe. I get one year, one year uninterrupted. I don't have to go to work. I don't have to punch a clock. All I get to do for one year is train. I mean, if, yeah, I think if we give you one year, trainer. you might be the, the WB Welter or heavyweight champion of the world, let I alone Jake fight. Paul. I would never fight Fury. He's, I love Tyson Fury. My point is, I think you would knock out Paul, no problem, if that yeah, was Paul. Paul's, Paul's a child. Paul, he's, he's, he's an yeah, adolescent I mean, guy. Plays with guy got ripped I mean, off for a million he's, he's dollars. Crushing it. We got to give some some yeah, recognition. He's yeah, doing yeah. very like well. So for I'm not he saying he's it. not doing well, guys. But, I'm not saying he's not doing are. well. I'm just but saying he's are. a child. No, no, no. I'm not. He's doing but very well for himself. I His girlfriend, by the way, is something special. No, they broke up. There you go, Joe. There you go. They broke up. By the way, bear down on the market for you, Joseph. Cuts he can't. When we have with the Bob to sports episodes, yes, if there was anybody, I, I, I really do believe that part of the beauty of us is I, I do think we're just very good people. We're, we're, we talk nice about people. We do the right things. We say the right things. But I'll tell you this. If there was one person that could just bury us for the end of time, it would be the jet. Because even like Cutsy, when Cutsy's mic'd up. He just has no regard for the fact that he's mic'd up. And the guy that we did the hot dog challenge with, he closed down the entire golf course for us. They are not open on Mondays. And this oh, guy, nice. he comes over and he's bringing us all of these hot dogs. It'll be one of the hot better. Hot dogs looked here. great, by the way. The problem is it was a brioche bun. So Oof. that's what made it so and hard. And it was not a regular hot dog. It was like an all beef. Frankfurt. It was a big hot dog. I know. I was going to say it looked Cutsy, delicious. Bro. I think what really killed us was the fact that it was that brioche bun. You know what I mean? Because it's like a buttery type. But anyway, this guy comes and his girlfriend happens to be on the golf cart. And of course, Jess rolling the camera and like cuts. He just looks over him. He's like, big dog. This girl is a rocket. <laughs> Oh, my God. Like, this this guy is blue, Bob. You know, guy, just this guy <laughs> closed down the golf course for us. And now he's got to hear in the audio if Jet doesn't cut it out, saying, Oh, my God, this girl is a <laughs> fucking <laughs> By the way, she's wearing heels and tight she jeans. And, great, a, look, and I wear heels top. on a golf course and a halter dangerous? top in the middle. Put a divot in the course. Bear down. She looked amazing. But the difference yeah, is just, so, you know, the I mic was giving presence. a little shout out. And it's like before the jet came in, we had a camera guy who mic'd Cutsy up and the camera and the mic on Cutsy's shirt kept dropping. Right. And I didn't know what Cutsy was yelling, but Cutsy didn't realize that he had earphones and so he could hear what we're saying. So throughout the round, Cutsy's saying, this guy's got to figure it out. If this guy's tape doesn't start, I mean, this Joe, guy just said, and I kept saying, Joe, Joe. Joe and he's like, what, Joe. big dog? Speak up. But like, Joe, we're mic'd up. He can hear us. He can't hear me. I'm like, Joe, yes, Joe, he can. Joe. He is an absolute product. Wasn't he Joe was making the rocking. complaints in the, uh, the, 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 the bar stool, uh, Mic'd up guy we were also worried wasn't about he that. complaining and, and about Jet, that? 
Jez expressed his. Concern. Well, they were much better. They were professional. Those things were actually put together. Oh, but okay. but Jez, the guy who tried to do it with us, he didn't even have the tape. He didn't have any of the proper. You know, he was unprepared. I'm yeah. sorry. You yeah. show up for 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 what we consider a high end. You know, opportunity to to work with a couple class acts, and and you're not prepared. I'm sorry. I'm not going to keep Jed, my mouth shut. Jed expressed his concern with the foreplay pod thing because he's like, dude, like. Cause he's going to be mic'd up. There's no stopping him. Like he's going to say what he wants to say. And I've learned with Katsi that there's just no, you can warn him, but he's going to say what he wants to say. And That's he's going to skyrocket it, numbers. The beauty of it, he's going to, he's going <laughs> to, numbers are going to go through the roof. But yes. if there's people that are going to going to get offended, that's just the way it's going to be. I've learned that with Gutsy. You just gotta, just gotta, I tell you what I won't say. I won't say I'm a work in progress. That's what I won't say. <laughs> Thank fucking God for that. Um, gentlemen, I got to tell you, the time has absolutely flown by. It's really been a special episode. I feel like and we I could think do a three-hour episode. I do, too. Three. I could go four hours tonight, but I got to play night golf. I'm meeting uh, one of my dad. Let me ask there. you something before we dive into the top five, because it fascinated me with the night golf. I have never seen balls like that. Is that a common thing with those no, balls? Expensive. I've never They're seen that. They're like $10. Was the coolest. Yeah, awesome. it's like $10 a ball. And That's we really went awesome. out. My parents live right on a country club here, right on, you know, the golf course here. And my dad's friend has a golf cart where you could have the headlights and you can see, and you can legitimately if you wanted to, you could play 18 holes at 11 o'clock at night. It was one of the coolest things I had. But, ever how you, but the course the isn't is. How could you see? Yeah, right, right. That was and how do you know question. if there's water or if there's whatever, well, like different? We, we've we played the course so many times that we know where water is. We know when a ball's out. We know. But if you when you hit the ball, the ball stays glowed up. So I yeah, even hit insane. one in the, the water. Ball is insane. But in the water, the ball was glowing up. So we could find the ball in the water. And he had I was one fascinated of by the ball, like a child. Like a, I was, was like a three year old looking at that ball. Now, you know, you have it to turn the ball of, on. Or is, when, does it, it's does it better, come out of the box lit up? How does that you have a little no, switch, you, I think. You, like you click it, like you hit your club on it and it, and it comes on. It's mm. better than day golf because when you're on the tee box, you're not worried about this bunker here, water there. Like you just see dark. So you're just free swinging. I played the best golf I've probably ever played in my life because wow. you're not worried about it. Um, so we're playing at nine o'clock and, and I'll tell you this. <laughs> How old is this guy, by the way, Bob, when you go over, to years years old, he becomes like a 68 year old best. retiree. Yeah. He, yeah, his, he really does live his best you're life hanging out with Jupiter, though. He really I, does. I, I know you guys like are a retirement a time, community, but, but bear not, down, not, bear just, down just nailed it because I do. You know what, Joe? I love it. I love playing pickleball in the morning. It's such a workout for me. And it's one of those workouts where you don't even know that you're working out because you're having so much fun. It, <laughs> it is. The it's funniest part of dominating was, a pickleball court with people th- th- when, two, listen, three times older than him. Listen, he d- when you don't when he doesn't have to punch a regular clock right now. And this why would you not want to be doing exactly what the fuck he's doing in great weather? You wake up, you you sport in the morning for your workout. I call it sporting. You're not even working <laughs> out. He's sporting when he wakes up in the morning. He takes a little nap or does his afternoon lunch. And then, you know, he's out for night golf. I mean, it really is quite a life. It's awesome. I would love to do it. By the way, when I'm I'm really I don't consider myself a napper at all. Mm -hmm. The last four to five days in Jupiter, I've taken a nap and they've all been. I'm a big nap. I love that's a nap community over there. It is. No I, I love that. even watching my dad play so but I love going there in the morning. Problem is, watching. bear down. Some of those people don't wake up from the naps. <laughs> wow, you know Jesus. that's so old over I mean, there, man. Yes. They're ancient. You know what he can do? That crossed the line, bear down. That cross. You talk about a guy that, that crossed some of his dad's friends, bro. <laughs> I know. I know. He continues. I walk. tell you what, an all out assault today on the senior community between the jackals and now this underhand. I didn't appreciate that today. I didn't I appreciate mean, that. Today. Jackals is a bit overdone. No, I mean, Joe, congratulations. Joe. I'm happy for them, but like, I, you know, some of these be guys, very careful. Joe, you're going to go on Mr. Burger. By the way, they don't even home. have a home plate. They don't even run home. They have a separate plate. So they can't even throw them out at home. How ridiculous is that? Let me tell you this. The Jackals, (laughs) in less than 24 hours, 
have sold over four thousand dollars in merch. They're Good averaging. For them. I'm not they're, seeing a dime of that. They're averaging. Well, you got to. <laughs> if, 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 Bob, if he was, he'd be wearing fucking. Well, I'd be I'd fucking. Do. I'd be putting it on the banners in I'll the in my this. living room. You got the Joey Coldcut shirts on Bob Does Sports. How many Joey Coldcut shirts? I haven't seen sold? nearly the amount of promotion that I well, saw. I saw I ten. Mean, I saw ten different uh, promos for the shirts. If, if you want to go, order guy, the jackal, if, the jackal if, promos if, were on. Fire. The Jackal <laughs> promos, it took over Instagram at one point. It was on Bob Does Sports, Brilliantly Dumb Show, Brilliantly Dumb. I mean, you know, every which well, way it could be shown. What's hot is hot, and right now... By the way, can I ask, Jack- on the shirt, it says Jackals, and it's a lighthouse. Well, I don't understand, where. why is it there a, a, like a wolf or a coyote on there? Because that signifies Jupiter, Florida. All right. Light- the lighthouse... Thing. Yeah, the light light let me tell you, there's one thing I'm not going to stand for, and that's you coming at the Jupiter Jackals. Because right now, I didn't. There's no, you are coming at the Jupiter. There is nothing <sighs> hotter right now than the Jupiter Jack. <laughs> oh, that's doing, ridiculous. That is true. That's Joe. absurdity. Joe, Joe, I'll tell you this, and I'm being honest with you. The Jupiter Jackals merchandise has sold more than Bob the Sports merchandise. So yeah, I'm going to push the hell out of it. Well, whatever gets the job done. Am I wrong? By the so way, I'd like to think if this podcast had some merch, it would push some numbers too. By the way, sure. Bear Down is a, is a craft salesman if I've ever seen I'm it. I'm sure. Look, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. Sold, I mean, a couple did poll, the, sold a couple polls, 316 shirts. Look what week. he did. To, look what he did to Klondike. Look what he yeah. did to Klondike. Yeah. Yeah. Klondike no, no one had heard from Klondike in like 20 fucking years. Klondike was buried under their own product. They were frozen in the ground. <laughs> uh, and by the way, cuts, I've been seeing a lot of care packages showing up. Up at the Demar house. I mean, house this guy's got. By the way, he's got great. He's got some, everybody. Some sending vitamin company guy. sponsors you now, Joe. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's, it's, you know, it's a new, it's a guy new. goes to the gym one day. A vitamin company knocks at the door. Oh, by the what way, this the is no is no this? joke. This product you know is next level. You know what I love? This the collagen to... mojo. Oh, I got this oh, thrive. Dude. This is for bloating. Oh, right on. This is for bloating. It helps. I I, I bloat all the time. Tell the tell the supplement people to drop me a line, would you? I could use some help. But you know, I hundred percent. Thank you. Hundred. Okay. Out, you know what I you know I love with Cutsy? Like we all know and love the Cutsy that we got, but when it I comes it. to promo Cutsy, it's like a different guy. Like oh, yeah. when he goes into yeah. the camera, he's just like, Hey, Instagram, <laughs> Joey Gold Cuts here, and I want to tell you about <laughs> supplements today. It's like that's he always not our t- he loves to strike the promos in the morning when he wakes up with the old yeah. thing the hair. Oh, when I kill I tell you hair. what, folks. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, something that's great hey, that's getting me through this Instagram morning is this anti-bloating <laughs> supplement sent to me by uh vitamin <laughs> Joe company. The you guys best. are outrageous. Cuts 15. <laughs> 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 All right, gentlemen, I got night golf. And then and I will tell you, it, it has been, this is the, po- I mean, this is our podcast. This is our show. This is what yes. you get. You get Mikey V. You get Joey Cold Cuts. You get Bob. Um, I would like to do a quick top five here. And the top five that we're going to have today is the top five greatest upsets in sports. And I would like to preface this by saying we're different eras here. I'm going to go with my top fives that I know to me were the best upsets that I had ever seen. Um, and I think that's the way that it should be done. I think Mikey V's is going to range back to 1974 because <laughs> he's that old of a soul. And with that being said, let's start with Mikey V. This is the top five greatest sports upsets. I want to do something tonight and and correct me if you don't like the style. I want to do the honorable mentions first and then go into the top five. If that's okay, Joseph, sure. do you have a problem? Yeah. With that? No, I don't have a problem with that. All right. Honorable mention. I'm going to give right off the bat to the St. Peter's Peacocks. I'm going to give it right off to the bat to the, to the miraculous run that they went on the deepest run ever by a 15 seed in the NCAA tournament, a team with a $1 million budget. Uh, taking down Kentucky, taking down Purdue, taking down a team in Murray State that had won like 21 games in a row. Yes, they got waxed by North Carolina. North Carolina, one of the hottest teams. I mean, their path to the final would have been absolutely ridiculous. So honorable mention to the Peacocks. Number five, Division One AA Appalachian State rolling into the big house in Michigan in 2003 as a 33 point underdog and taking down the mighty Michigan Wolverines. I'll never forget where I was 
that day. I was in my attic watching that game going absolutely ape shit when they blocked the game winning field goal attempt and returned it to the house. Especially you as an Ohio State fan. Oh, had to my be God. So sweet. Sweetest. One of the sweetest things ever. Number four, Buster Douglas knocking out Mike Tyson. 1990 Buster Douglas, a 42 to one underdog. That is like one of the most well-documented uh, Cinderella stories. Buster Douglas over Mike Tyson. Number three, Leicester City winning mm-hmm. the Premier League in 2015. Probably the longest gambling shot in the history of all sports. Five thousand to one yeah. to start the season to win the Premier League. Five thousand to one. And I remember seeing the simulcasts mm-hmm. of those final games on that final Sunday for premier league and like at all the different bars and stuff. Cause it was like, they needed several results to happen and all the games were going on at once and they kept showing them and just people were losing their minds. I would have loved to have been in England for that one day. So Leicester city at, uh, at three, number two, the miracle on ice. I got the miracle on ice at number two, 1980, well-documented uh, team of amateurs and college athletes taking down the Soviets uh, incredible story. And then number one, People may not like it. I think that given the facts of the matter, they were a wild card team. They made it all the way to the Super Bowl as a wild card team. First team never win the Super Bowl, I believe, is a wild card team against an undefeated Patriots team that I don't Mm. think anyone thought would lose a football game. I don't think anybody gave the Giants a shot. The Giants in Super Bowl 42, a 12 point underdog against the New England Patriots. That's my number one uh, biggest long shot Cinderella story, whatever you want to call it, upset. Giants Super Bowl 42, David Tyree helmet catch. Uh, Patriots had Randy Moss catching 50 touchdowns, whatever it was, <laughs> or Brady throwing for 50 touchdowns, Moss catching 20. I mean, yeah. it was just ridiculous that that team lost. That's good top my top five. five. That's I like a good top five. Yeah, I, 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 I don't have a lot of issues with that. I have all. some of the same things in mind, to I be honest. Think, I do think, even going into this, I do think some of these will be somewhat similar. Yeah, just different order. Cold cuts, I'll let you take it away. So we're doing honorable mentions first, right? This one's going to bother you guys both, and I'm sorry. And it's no no ill will to you guys, but I if for, for honorable mention. Now, now I'm going to take for my honorable mention, the Boston Red Sox coming back uh, down three, nothing. No, I know fair. that you don't like to hear it, no, but I no, mean, just to, that's to come back and win that American league. I mean, uh, you know, the conference championship and then to go back. I mean, it was, it was pretty unbelievable. I'm not a Red Sox guy, but to watch it unfold. And then, you know, the curse of the great Bambino and everything, the whole backdrop of that story, I, I have to tip my cap to it. And my honorable mention it doesn't break my top five, but it's right there. Um, and number five, I am going to take um, what is your number one bear down is the New York Giants winning with Eli Manning. Um, I, I remember where I was. I was at work in the restaurant. I I was I hated the Patriots. I hated Brady. I still do. And, you know, I was so, so thrilled to see that they lost because no one thought they were. They're were already talking about the first ever 19 and 0 undefeated season. It was just unbelievable to see how that game folded out. And and to me, that's my number five. Number four, I'm going to put one that I guarantee neither of you will have on your list. But I, I mean, it to me is pretty fascinating. It's John Daly winning the 1991 PGA Championship. And if you know the backdrop behind the story, he had not even qualified for the tournament. What happened is there was a golfer named Nick Price who had to drop out because the birth of his firstborn son was on the day of the tournament. He dropped out. There was eight other alternative golfers who could not make it. John Daly was the ninth of the alternative golfers, drove all night, had never been to the course, managed to get this Nick Price's caddy to caddy for him and went on to win the tournament at 1,000 to one odds, winning a major when you haven't even seen the course. To me, it's just baffling. So that's my number four, uh, and it's a golf one. So I think everybody can relate to that. Number three, I'm going to put Leicester City winning, you know, the, the premiership to me. I love when teams like this, you know, when you have uh, teams like Manchester United and our Liverpool and all these teams spending so much money to bring in recruitment and big, Chelsea, t- big time talent, Chelsea. And then to see a team that just 
happen to have everything fall into place and really are not even, you know, a team that you would think would be on the cusp of being relegated to win to me was mind blowing. It wasn't just a one game. This was an entire season led up to winning. Very, very impressive. Number two, Greece winning the Euro Cup in 2004 yeah, yeah, to me is unbelievable again beating portugal and a young cristiano ronaldo um something that that country will never forget on one of the biggest stages and the biggest platforms yeah, uh awesome. so i got two back-to-back -back soccer uh, mm -hmm. and then the first one has got to be for me being a hockey guy miracle on ice um you watch the movie it's even more inspiring it's it's incredible unfortunately i wasn't born until 1986 so i didn't see it but you hear the legends of it and how trechiak and the soviets were you know, the, the pinnacle thing in hockey at that time. And no one thought they would ever be beaten and for a bunch of just, like you said, college guys and guys who really no one knew to come together and, you know, and, and it represents the United States of America, our great country, I think to me has to be cemented in number one. So that's my five through one gentlemen. And again, we have some reoccurring ones there bear down, but I just think you have to mention that. Yeah, I, I felt like with this list, and even with cold cuts too, I don't, it's hard to disagree with anything like that. No, I don't like, think it's I, about, it's I think it's just like, ranking what you think is more impressive. Like I had Holly Holmes uh, beating Ronda Rousey. It was yeah. like very close to consideration because no, of the gambling implications. Ronda Rousey was a minus 2000 favorite. I'll never forget that. Everybody at the bar, nobody even bet the fight because the spread was so insanely yeah. wild. And then when she knocked her out, I was like, what the fuck just happened? But I was I was interesting to hear you guys, too, because you guys again, you guys have seen more. I mean, it might not seem a lot, but six years of more sports and different upsets and whatnot, mm -hmm. I thought would change things a little bit for me. I got a I got a different honorable mention. Um, and to me, one of the most shocked I had been was Phil Mickelson winning the U S mm -hmm. open on, on a, a tournament that he wasn't even invited on, which is very recently. What, um, maybe no, not even PGA, at, it was not the U S open. It was the PGA championship. Bob. PGA championship was to me, like, cause we were watching that while we it were was golfing. amazing. Yeah. I was in shock. And then he went against kept on the last day. It was amazing. As much as I was rooting for Mick, the whole world was rooting for Mickelson. I thought Kepka would smoke him. Um, but my top five for number five, and I remember this as clear as day, Appalachian State um, versus Michigan to me. Appalachian State was shocking, absolutely shocking. I put that at five. Number four, I mean, you could pick just about any of the games that they won. St. Peter's was phenomenal. To me, the one person that I would give the, the edge to would be George Mason. George Mason going dancing the way that they did to the final four um, was nuts for me. And in my era, to me, one of the bigger upsets round by round um, that there Butler is. Butler was another one, by the way, a few yeah, years Butler back. Butler was a great one. Butler I want was to go great. way back. NC State, Jimmy Valvano. Yes, against Jimmy Valvano, survive in advance. I mean, that's that's, that's, the only thing is for me, was... I don't, I've seen the 30 for 30s. I don't remember that. I mean, These, I don't remember. I was I was just a baby, but I mean, I remember watching all like the highlights of it. They used to replay those games on. You remember ESPN Classic? I don't think yeah. that's around anymore. They used to they replay that, that on ESPN back. Classic all the time. But they were a six seed, so that's why I was kind of like, yeah. yes, it's a Cinderella story, but it's not like they were like a twelve or a Butler 30. was like an eight. But I think still incredible, still incredible. Um, Sorry. yeah, I got George Mason uh, going to the Final Four at number four. Number three, I got Giants Patriots. Patriots, I bet the house on the Patriots. I thought there was no way in hell the Giants not only could beat Brady and the Patriots, but just to go the way and the distance that they did, I don't think anybody saw it coming. Um, I got that at three. Number two, give me Buster Douglas over Mike Tyson. Uh, bear down, you might know better than me, Cutsy. You might know. I don't even know the odds. I think my dad might have told me that they didn't even put odds on it. 40, 42 to one. Douglas 40, 42 42 to one to one. is yep. crazy to me. Um, and then number one, I mean, it can't be one of my favorite movies of all time. USA over the Soviets miracle is the absolute best. The so absolute now with best. everything that's going on too, that kind of holds a little bit more. Yeah, sure, no does. About it. sure does. Um, and I will tell you this right now, fellas, 
this is, I said it before, this is the Brilliant Um Show. These are the boys that I want to go to war with week in, week out. We got Mikey V back to full strength and the support that Mikey V got after the missed podcast for people just begging to get yes. Mikey V back into the mix. The people that were A, worried about him. And again, throughout it, like building up, I was like, oh, fuck, like, what are we going to do about the podcast? It hit a point with how consistent Mikey V is that when I didn't hear from him recording with you, Joe, in my head, I was like, what the fuck? Like, where is Mikey V where I got concerned? Instrumental part of the podcast. There is no brilliantly dumb show. There is no brilliantly dumb. There's two B's in brilliantly dumb, Bear Down and Bob. Yes, and there is no Bob Does Sports. There is no Brilliantly Dumb show. There is no Brilliantly Dumb. Without Joey Coltcuts, you got both those boys back tonight. Um, I will be playing night golf if you need me, gentlemen. Um, we're going to start on the eighth tee box and then just kind of take it from there. I love you, boys. I appreciate you, boys. Phenomenal, phenomenal episode. That's another edition of the Brilliantly Dumb show. We will see you next time, ladies and gentlemen.